हे एवरी वन वेलकम टू होम स्कूल एंड होप एवरी बडी आर डूइंग फैंटेस्टिक एंड वेलकम बैक टू क्लास इलेवन केमिस्ट्री सीरीज ऑलरेडी आई कंप्लीटेड थ्री फुल चैप्टर्स ऑफ केमिस्ट्री ऑफ क्लास इलेवन वीडियो लिंक्स आर प्रोवाइडेड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन डोंट फर्गेट टू गोवेंट चेक इट आउट सो टूडे आई हैव स्टार्टेड द मोस्ट वंडरफुल चैप्टर ऑफ केमिस्ट्री दैट इज केमिकल बॉन्डिंग you know what i call this chemical bonding as heart of chemistry right so why do we call this chemical bonding as heart of chemistry because you know it is this chemical bonding that you need to understand properly to understand every other chapter of chemistry that you study in both class 11 and class 12 so there are lot more basics involved in this chemical bonding which is very much essential to understand people fail to understand this chapter don't know why many students feel difficult with this chapter but definitely this is the most easiest and this is the most important chapter uh, that is very much necessary to understand all other chapters in chemistry so do not miss out even a single video definitely if you miss the videos you will miss something in a subject i am damn sure about it okay so in every single video i will come up with beautiful tricks to remember the concept beautiful tricks to write the structures easily and to remember the structures easily right so don't miss out the videos and do watch the videos till the end and coming to the chapter chemical bonding one of the biggest chapters of class 11 chemistry and one of the high weightage chapter for all the competitive examinations even for the board examination this is very very important so what we learn in chemical bonding see we mainly learn about the different attractions that are present between the atoms of molecule or compound okay say uh, i i'll just tell you what main headings we have to learn in a chapter say majorly we will try to understand what exactly we mean by chemical bond and why chemical bonds have to be formed so why this chemical bond is necessary okay and that was beautifully explained by koschel and lewis theory so initially you have a very basic theory koschel and lewis theory right and here uh, that is in today's class i am going to cover entire details about koschel lewis theory okay and where you need to know how to draw dot structures lewis dot structures for some molecule okay so i am going to tell you a super trick to draw the dot structures easily you will never ever find it difficult once you learn this trick okay so wait for the concept and watch the video till the end fine and after this we will try to understand in a detailed way about ionic bond okay actually there are three types of chemical bond mainly three types ionic bond covalent bond and coordinate bond so we will learn how ionic bond is formed and uh, you know uh, on what factors this ionic bond depends right and here comes there are a set of rules called fasen's rule you know that's the most important topic for competitive exams okay so and next we will learn about bond parameters okay so there are certain bond parameters uh, like uh, you know bond length bond angle bond order dipole moment etc uh, say so here i forgot we will also learn about uh, you know covalent bond right fine and later comes uh, the formation of molecules as uh, and the structure of molecule you know for any molecule or a compound its structure plays a major role in the reactions and it is very much essential to understand the structures for the molecules that is the shapes for a molecule okay so if you take up ammonia it stays in a particular shape if you take methane it has a shape if you take pcl5 it has another shape right 
so how we can predict these shapes and uh, you know why these shapes uh, are arising for a molecule all that we will try to discuss so here comes a very very important theory vsepr theory in short we can call it as vesper theory so this theory explains everything about the shapes of molecule okay and later uh, uh, vbt again uh, how a molecule forms and about the shapes even vbt also can explain uh, valence bond theory and later you have uh, something called you know mot mot in the sense molecular orbital theory this is really very very important and finally actually this is the theory that tells why molecules and how molecules are formed okay so uh, how can the atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbitals and writing electronic configuration and mot you know this is the most important topic for competitive examinations and do focus and finally we will have to study something about you know hydrogen bonding it's a very small topic but then we have to concentrate see these are the major points that we will have to concentrate from a chapter okay so without a delay let me start off with uh, introduction on chemical bond why chemical bonds have to form and kochel lewis theory okay fine so coming to a chemical bond if you ask me to define a chemical bond i can define this way it is nothing but a kind of attraction between atoms between uh, different atoms i can say between different atoms or a group of atoms or a group of atoms okay uh, in a molecule or a compound is called chemical bond for example imagine you have a molecule h2o right say H2O. If you have to elaborate and write, we write H2O like this, right? So, what are these lines? They are called as bonds, right? Say, bond is nothing but an attraction. See, chemical attraction is indicated by bonds, right? Say, if hydrogen and oxygen have to stay together. there must be some attraction between them otherwise this hydrogen will not stay with this oxygen right it will go away right say when two hydrogens and one oxygen stay together you get water if they have to stay together there must be certain level of attraction right and and those attractions are called chemical bonds those attractions are called chemical bonds okay so there are actually three types of chemical bonds um, as i told you right so there are three types of chemical bonds first one is ionic bond so these words you must have heard in your lower classes itself second one is covalent bond and the third one is coordinate bond okay so fine let me explain briefly a very short uh, introduction about ionic and covalent bond i'll give you today uh, but about their detailed aspects we will study in the next video right okay fine so ionic bond covalent bond coordinate bond three types of bond in other words i can say these are the three types of attractions you find between the atoms or group of atoms uh present in a molecule or compound okay fine so hope uh, you got to know about uh, the word bond right so bond means just an attraction okay so now so why why do these bonds form or actually why atoms combine okay so the big question is why atoms combine or i can say uh, why bonds atoms combine definitely when they combine some sort of attraction is formed so in other words the same question can be asked in a different way like why bonds formed bonds formed right so for this for this question uh, you know there are two scientists who have put forward their theory called 
लुविस थियोरी और वी जनरली कॉल इट एज ऑक्टेट थियोरी ओके सो फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन द आंसर इज गिवेन बाय क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन लुविस थियोरी ओके सो दिस क्वेश्चन लुविस थियोरी एक्सप्लेन्स हाउ एंड व्हाई हाउ एंड व्हाई यू नो केमिकल केमिकल बॉन्ड्स आर फॉर्म्ड केमिकल बॉन्ड्स आर फॉर्म्ड एंड और इन अदर वर्ड्स आई कैन से दिस क्वेश्चन एंड लुविस थियोरी एक्सप्लेन्स अबाउट हाउ मॉलिक्यूल्स आर फॉर्म्ड molecule in the sense what it is a group of atoms right so when atoms combine molecules are formed so exactly how and why molecules are formed uh, is what explained by kochel and lewis theory so let us see what they tell about this formation of molecules or what they tell about why atoms actually combine okay see guys according to this theory you know what they tell is atoms combine to get stability uh, they combine to become stable guys so now you have to understand what exactly we mean by stable right see stable in the sense uh, a feeling of happiness a feeling of satisfaction right so here in case of atoms or elements stability means stability means having having uh, electronic configuration electronic configuration similar to noble gases okay similar to uh, what i can say noble gases so can you all tell me the electronic configuration of noble gases here right say let me consider noble gases helium neon argon krypton xenon radon right say if i have to write helium's electronic configuration it is 1s2 neons i will write only the outermost electronic configuration that is uh, you know 2s2 2p6 argons 3s2 3p6 krypton 4s2 4p6 right xenon 5s2 5p6 and it goes on see i only wrote outermost electronic configuration right so usually noble gases are inert okay so these guys are inert we say that means they will not react with any element in our nature they will not react with any atom it is understood that noble gases are very much satisfied with the electrons they have so usually in the chemical reactions outermost shell electrons will participate okay so if you see our noble gases our outermost shell has eight electrons right eight electrons are there in outermost shell right except helium helium has two electrons right so these scientists thought that ho oh, maybe if the atoms or elements have eight electrons in the last shell then they are considered as stable uh, if they have that eight electron thing they do not react with any one so it's not necessary uh, to react uh, that means they are very much stable right so noble gases are not reacting with any one it's because they are happy with these eight electrons in the last shell okay then they got an idea that oh every elements uh, eagerly waits to get this eight electrons in the last shell you know what only noble gases have eight electrons in the last shell no, no other element has eight electrons in the last shell so it is to achieve that eight electrons in the last shell they participate in chemical reactions okay so uh, you know many of the elements have more than eight electrons or many elements have less than eight electrons so depending on the availability of electrons in the last shell they either lose electrons to have eight electrons in the last shell or they either gain electrons to get eight electrons in the last shell 
or sometimes they share their electrons with other atoms to have that eight electron thing in their last shell. So this is why the atoms combine with each other, you know, to form a molecule so that every atom can have eight electrons in the last shell. It is to achieve stability. So here having stability means having eight electrons in their last shell. Okay. So these people have introduced a very, very important rule that octet rule. We famously call it as octet rule. So what do you mean by octet rule? You know what atoms, atoms combine, combine with each other, with each other, okay, to have, to have eight electrons in their valence shell, okay. So, to combine, to combine, you know, atoms, atoms either lose electrons, or gain electrons or share electrons, share electrons with others, with others. So why they lose, gain or share electrons with other atoms? It is to have that eight electrons in their last shell because having eight electrons in their last shell gives them stability. Okay, so that's why, you know, they will try to have the electronic configuration which is similar to noble gases. So that's why atoms combine with other atoms uh, to form various molecules. Okay, see, if these atoms do not combine with each other, we will not have various molecules in our nature, right? See, water will form only if hydrogen and oxygen combine. So, why do hydrogen and oxygen uh, can combine? It's because hydrogen wanted to get stability, oxygen also wanted to get stability. So, some losing, gaining or sharing business takes place between this hydrogen and oxy oxygen. Okay, so that's how they, they can satisfy uh, having eight electrons in their last shell. Okay, see every atom cannot achieve that eight electronic configuration. There are some atoms uh, like, you know, hydrogen, lithium, uh, you know, beryllium, all these uh, cannot have eight electrons in their last shell. Instead of that, they can have electronic configuration similar to helium. So, if these atoms have electronic configuration similar to helium, then they are said as stable. Okay, fine. So, now that you understood why and how uh, these atoms can combine with each other, right? So, this is what uh, the definition of octet rule that you can follow. So, now I told you, uh, you know, uh, when they combine with each other, they either lose or gain or share electrons, right? So, now let us understand the two types of bond here, okay? So, the first one is ionic bond and second one covalent bond, okay? So, what do you mean by ionic bond and here atoms, atoms lose or gain electrons, electrons to form molecules, to form molecules is called ionic bond, okay. Whereas covalent bond, so here what happens is atoms, atoms share, share electrons with each other, with each other to form molecules. Okay, so here atoms will get stability either by losing or gaining electrons to form a molecule and here atoms will get stability by sharing of electrons. So, uh, let's have a basic idea how ionic bond that is how these atoms or uh, elements gain or lose electrons 
and let's also have a general idea about how covalent bond is formed okay their detailed aspects next video we will discuss because for understanding lewis dot structure you must have a basic idea about these two types of bond that how they actually form right saying as for ionic bond uh, let us take an example of formation of nacl right okay say if you see na its atomic number 11 if i have to write its electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 right say this sodium if it can lose this one electron it gets eight electrons in their last shell that means stable electronic configuration so it will lose it will lose one electron and it becomes na plus okay so this is our cation right so this is how looking at the electronic configuration one can able to say whether it can lose electron or gain electron right okay so now if i take cl atomic number 17 if i have to write its electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 uh, 3s2 3p5 isn't it so this is our um, electronic configuration of chlorine see if this chlorine can get one electron you know its electronic configuration will become 3s2 3p6 uh, it, it's the stable electronic configuration right so it gets one electron and it will become cl minus so how did it how did this guy get an electron who has given here sodium so here sodium gave electron and that electron was taken by chlorine so it's a mutual understanding okay so now na plus ion and cl minus ions are near they are quite near because this has given electron this has taken electron and this is there in the form of na plus sodium is stable in the form of na plus now cl is stable in the form of cl minus you see this guy has positive charge and this one has a negative charge so always there is an attraction between positive and negative charge right so they both will stay together and it will stay as nacl okay so this is a new compound which is very much different than sodium and cl okay so this is how nacl is formed and the attraction between these guys is called you know electrostatic force of attraction in other words this type of attraction itself we will call it as ionic bond okay so ionic bond bond means attraction remember so ionic bond is uh, the attraction that is present between the two ions okay so how did these ions form one ion has formed by losing electron the other one uh, has formed by gaining the same electron okay so this is how ionic bonds are formed and coming to formation of covalent bond formation of covalent bond as i already told you these covalent bonds are formed by sharing of electrons isn't it say for example uh, you know what if you have to form cl2 cl2 is a molecule right so here cl and cl see here you, you you can't expect this guy losing electron and that guy taking electron because both are cl here okay so here giving taking business cannot happen right so here if i see its last electronic configuration uh, you know 3s2 3p5 and here also 3s2 3p5 so this chlorine needs one electron for the stability this chlorine also needs one electron for the stability right okay so let me mm, arrange these electron in a particular order so there are you know 5 plus 2 7 electrons so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 7 electrons i arranged around the symbol in the form of a dots actually this is called dot structure of chlorine so what is this dot structure so this way of representing element is called dot structure okay so you will have to write the symbol of the element and then mention the number of valence electrons not all the electrons you will only mention the number of electrons in the last shell that is valence electrons around the symbol in the form of dots 
you have to mention in the form of dots okay so this is this cl another cl also let me mention its valence electrons in the form of these crosses okay so this is the dot structure of this cl this is the dot structure of this cl you can mention in dots itself just for the differentiation purpose you know i have used crosses fine so this chlorine is happy if it gets one electron okay see already seven are there if eight is there it is happy right similarly this chlorine is happy if it gets you know one electron so what happens these two electrons are getting shared so in this in this two electrons one is from this cl another one is from this cl right so uh, you know sharing of two electrons took place so cl bond cl we will write okay so that means uh, both uh, chlorine have mutual understanding okay say so they either they cannot lose or gain electrons right so what they think is okay let's let's share the electrons that way let both of be uh, happy let's both of become happy by sharing electrons they think okay so that's how sharing business takes place between the two atoms hope this type of structures these are called dot structures or lewis dot structures uh, for simple molecules we have learned in our class 10 also right carbon and its compounds chapter we have learned how to draw a dot structures right so usually dot structures are written dot structures are written for covalent compounds okay so uh, this is called as a covalent compound covalent molecule because sharing of electrons are taking place this is called a bond okay so if one pair is shared between two atoms one bond is formed okay if two pairs of atoms are shared double bond is formed if three pairs of atoms are formed triple bond is formed okay say you must know how to write the dot structures you know this is the dot structure for cl2 okay likewise if you have to write the dot structure for oxygen you know how do you write you will show two bonds and then one two three four here remaining electrons you will show right so one two three four five six seven eight so eight electrons see one two three four this bond has two electrons this bond also has two electrons so all together eight electrons are there with this oxygen similarly with this oxygen one two three four one bond means two electrons another bond means two, two electrons so four plus four eight so this oxygen also has four uh, you know eight electrons around this so that way sharing of electrons gives stability for the molecule okay so we will have to learn how to write such structures okay so writing uh, lewis dot structures is one of the very very important aspect of the chapter so i will teach you a super trick to write the to write such dot structures uh, for covalent molecules and remember these lewis dot structures we mainly write for covalent molecules okay say for oxygen nitrogen chlorine you can write it but if it is a compound like co2 co3 minus 2 or no3 minus right or so4 minus 2 you know they'll ask you write the dot structures for these compounds then you know uh, many of the students feel difficult and now if you learn the trick it is no more a difficult topic so listen to a trick carefully so what is the trick we are learning trick to learn trick to write the dot structures easily okay hey guys here are the rules that i have written on a board uh, which you have to follow to write the lewis dot structure easily so uh, there are certain rules say you can copy all these rules or you can take a screenshot out of it definitely this trick will do wonders for you uh, with this you can write any lewis dot structure that is there in your syllabus easily you can write it off okay so when i read the rules definitely you would wonder what i am actually talking about but i'll explain each and every rule with some examples don't worry we will solve uh, four to five examples so that uh, you know you will become familiar with the rules like how to use them first let me uh, read out for you 
first thing that you need to do is calculate the number of valence electrons okay okay first uh, imagine i have a molecule hcn okay where i have to write the dot structure for hcn okay so what is the first rule says calculate number of valence electrons say every atoms valence electrons you have to add say how many valence electrons are there in hydrogen it is one how many valence electron in carbon carbon belongs to 14th group so 14th group elements have valence electrons 4 and how many valence electrons in case of nitrogen nitrogen belongs to 15th group element so 15th group elements have the valence electrons 5 right so this is how every atoms valence electrons you have to add see number of valence electrons identification i explained in the chapter periodic classification of elements in a detailed way if you want you can check it out okay so all together 4 plus uh, 5 it's 9 9 plus 1 10 so 10 electrons are the total number of valence electrons present in hcn molecule okay so this is our n1 value okay so take that value as n1 okay so first step is over right so hope you understood how to do your first step just count the valence electrons in each and every atom okay second step calculate n2 so how do you calculate n2 you have to do 2 into number of hydrogen atoms plus 8 into number of other atoms okay so let me do it the second step here so you have hydrogen atom right multiply with 2 2 into how many hydrogen atoms 1 right plus 8 into 8 into how many other atoms are there in a molecule other atoms other than hydrogen you have carbon and nitrogen so two other atoms are there other than hydrogen right so how much do you get it is 2 plus 8 2 is 16 right so all together 18 so this 18 is your n2 value okay so what is n2 value it is 18 okay coming to third step hope you understood how to calculate n2 2 into number of hydrogen atoms plus 8 into number of other atoms other than hydrogen okay fine third step is calculate n3 so how do you calculate n3 n2 minus n1 right so what is n2 18 minus what is n1 it is 10 so how much do you get 8 so this is your n3 value okay so we have calculated n1 n2 and n3 so with this information you will come to know how many bonds are present in this molecule okay so how many total number of bonds present in a molecule that you will come to know so how to do number of bonds so number of bonds how do you find it is just you have to do n3 by 2 what is n3 8 8 by 2 is how much 8 by 2 is 4 right 2 ones are 2 fours are 8 so how many bonds are there there are four bonds so you got to know how many bonds are there okay and you should also get to know how many lone pairs are there isn't it so number of bonds half a work is over we got to know then to find the number of lone pairs what you need to do you should calculate n4 okay so next step what i am doing calculating n4 how do you calculate n4 it is n1 minus n3 what is n1 n1 is 10 minus n3 what is n3 8 so 10 minus 8 you will get 2 right so now you can find out number of lone pairs present right so how do you find number of lone pairs it is n4 value n4 value is 2 divided by 2 
right so 2 divided by 2 how much it is 1 so there are one lone pair present in this HCN molecule right so this much work you have to do for finding number of bonds and number of lone pairs okay so uh, you know initially it may look little lengthy but when you practice more and more questions you know it hardly take one minute okay one minute or one and a half minute time to write the structure okay see otherwise it becomes a messy if you don't follow this trick you know it it looks very complicated and you know uh, it looks very much messy to write the structures for complicative uh, molecules okay fine now what you have to do we are actually drawing dot structure now with this idea so our idea is to find number of bonds and to find number of lone pairs so now what you have to do see the point select most electro positive element and write at center okay so that electro positive element you should write at the center so hydrogen carbon nitrogen so the most electro positive element is carbon here so carbon i will write at the center remaining two elements i will write on to either side of carbon okay so this is most important electro positive element you have to write at the center remaining two elements on to a side you can write down okay next what you have to do arrange other atoms and show bonds with central atom then satisfy octet of each atom by showing lone pairs okay so what i have to do see this is what we call central atom the atom which you wrote at the center the major electro positive element is there no that is called central atom so you have to write other atoms onto a side first you put the bonds between them you know what how many how many bonds you have all together four bonds right so one bond i will put here second bond i will put here two more bonds where will you put you can't show between carbon and hydrogen okay if you see the octet of hydrogen hydrogen octet i mean hydrogen is stable if it has two electrons around it one bond means two electrons so this hydrogen has already become stable by getting this bond okay so one bond means two electron so this bond belongs to hydrogen this bond also belongs to carbon it means that this bond belongs to hydrogen no so hydrogen two electrons if it has it is stable so one bond only you will show between hydrogen right so remaining two bonds where will you show definitely between carbon and nitrogen okay so all the four bonds you have shown this way so you should think so wherever hydrogen is there you can't show double bond or triple bond you can show only one bond okay fine so now octet is satisfied for hydrogen now carbon if it has eight electrons around it it will be satisfied so carbon you see how many bonds it has one two three four this bond means two electrons here two electrons here two electrons here two electrons 2 plus 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, around carbon also, you have 8 electrons. So, carbon is very, very happy. Octet is satisfied for carbon also. Coming to nitrogen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It has only 3 bonds around it. That means 6 electrons are only there. So, 2 more electrons it won't know. So, you have 1 lone pair. So, where will you show that 1 lone pair? Definitely on nitrogen. Okay, so now you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nitrogen also has 8 electrons. So, this way you have to check the octet of every single atom after showing bonds and lone pair. Okay, so this is a very, very simple example I have solved using a trick. So, this is the dot structure for, uh, you know, HCN molecule. Okay, so it has four bonds and one lone pair. Where is that lone pair located? Lone pair is located on nitrogen. So when you put the lone pair, you have to be careful. Whichever atom has not satisfied octet, no, on that you have to put the lone pairs. Okay, fine. So now let us go for one more example. See guys, second example I am taking is CO3 
minus 2. Okay, so it is carbonate ion, right? CO3 minus 2 dot structure you have to write. Now let us see. What is our first step? Calculating N1. So how do you calculate N1? You just add all the valence electrons, right? So carbon has how many valence electrons? Step number one. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has how many valence electrons? Oxygen belongs to 16th group. So six valence electrons into three you have to do, right? And if you have minus, always add electron. Whenever you have plus, I mean, you see NH4 plus is there, right? So here CO3 minus 2. Whenever minus is there, always add electron minus 2. So I am adding two electrons extra. Okay. So I am adding two electrons extra for minus. Okay. Always remember for minus add electrons for plus remove electron, remove electron. So this is important to remember for doing first step. Okay. For example, you see ammonia. Ammonia. Nitrogen has, uh, you know, five valence electrons. Hydrogen has one. One into four, four. So, all together, five plus four, how much? It is nine. Since one plus is there, nine minus one, I will do. All together, N1 value is eight. N1 value is eight. Okay. So, like that. Whenever plus is there, from total valence electrons, uh, uh, do minus, okay, subtract. If you have plus 1, subtract 1. If you have plus 2, subtract 2. Whenever you have minus for the total valence electrons, add electrons. If you have minus 1, add 1. If you have minus 2, add 2. If you have minus 3, add 3, like that, okay. So, all together, totally how much? 4 plus 6, 3 is 18, 18 plus 2. So, all together you have 24 electrons which is equal to your N1 value. So, N1 value is 24. Let me do the second step. What is our second step? Calculating N2 value. How do you calculate N2? 2 into number of hydrogen atom if hydrogen is there plus 8 into number of other atoms. See here you don't have any hydrogen. So, you are not supposed to do 2 into. Okay. So, forget about this. You have other than hydrogen, you have 4, right? 3 plus 1, 4. So, 4 into 8 you have to do. Uh, so, 8 fours are 32, isn't it? So, 32 is your N2 value. So, what is our third step? Third step is calculate N3. How do you calculate N3? N2 minus N1. So, what is N2? 32. 32 minus 24 you have to do. So, 32 minus 24 is 8, right? So, that is your N3 value, okay? So, you got N1, N2 and N3. Uh, so, after that, uh, with this N1, N2 and N3 information, uh, you can calculate what? Number of bonds, right? So, number of bonds is equal to N3 by 2, right? You see, N3 by 2 gives you number of bonds. So, 8 divided by 2. So, it is 4. So, in the molecule, all together, 4 bonds are there. So, you got to know how many bonds are there, right? So, it is 4. Okay. So, one information you got to know. Now, what you have to do? Calculate N4. So, how do you calculate N4? N1 minus N3. What is N1? N1 is this, 24, right? Minus N3. N3 is 8. So, how much do you get here, guys? Uh, you will get around 16, right? So, 16 is your N4. So, with this, uh, you can get to know number of lone pairs. So, lone pairs are how many, guys? It is 16 by 2, right? So, all together... Mm, 8 lone pairs you have. 8 lone pairs. Isn't it? So, bonds are 4 in a molecule but lone pairs are 8. So, this is what the information you got to know. Now, you have to write the dot structure, Lewis dot structure. So, uh, for writing a Lewis dot structure, select most electropositive element. Here, most electropositive element is carbon. So, carbon I will write at the center. And there are 3 oxygen atoms, no? 
वन आई विल मेन्शन हियर ओके फर्स्ट वन ऑक्सीजन सेकेंड ऑक्सीजन थर्ड ऑक्सीजन ओके सो लाइक दिस यू कैन मेन्शन थ्री ऑक्सीजन अराउंड and then you put the bonds how many bonds are there four bonds one bond you show here second bond third bond fourth bond you can show between any oxygen okay you can show this fourth bond here or you can show this fourth bond here also not an issue fine okay so now uh, you have to uh, show the lone pairs right for showing a lone pair first check the central atom whether it whether its octet is complete or not okay see carbon 1 2 3 4 four bonds it has around it four bonds in the sense four two is a eight electrons so eight electrons are already there around carbon so no need to touch our carbon and coming to this oxygen guys so uh, this oxygen has two bonds that means four electrons are there it needs four more electrons yes or no so one lone pair you show here another lone pair right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so 8 are over 8 electrons are over for this oxygen octet is satisfied so among eight lone pairs two pairs we have used now left is six pairs isn't it so you see there is only one two electrons so this oxygen needs six electrons so 1 2 3 4 5 6 three pairs are used here remaining three pairs i can put for this oxygen right so 6 7 8 8 8 over octet satisfied here 6 7 8 8 over octet satisfied so for every atom octet satisfied so this is how you have to show the lone pairs then show the charge guys so what is the charge minus 2 so put the brackets like this and show minus 2 okay so this is how you can write the dot structure for co3 minus 2 okay so uh, i have shown you two examples right okay so now you can try for these compounds you know no3 minus try writing dot structure for no3 minus okay on your own and also so4 minus 2 for this also you can try writing a dot structure so these are practice questions for you thoroughly you practice okay so the more uh, questions you practice more easy you will find with a trick so i have explained how to use a trick so use a trick and score very good mark in your board examination if lewis dot structure is asked okay fine and now let me tell you the limitations of octet rule so what is the octet rule octet rule says that atoms combine by uh, losing electron or gaining electron or uh, sharing electron to achieve stable electronic configuration right so that's how a stable molecules are formed but for this theory there are certain limitations let us see what are the limitations of octet rule guys so far we have learned the importance of octet rule right but now we will see certain limitations of octet rule under that the first and important limitation is extended octet extended octet or we call it as super octet super octet say so if you try writing lewis dot structure for pcl5 you know we will write something like that using the following tricks that i told you before you can write the dot structure for pcl5 so when you write you know this is how you will observe so there are five bonds with five cl okay five cls and each cl will have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 eight. so eight electrons here 1 2 3 4 Five six one two three four five six. So here also three lone pairs. Here also three lone pairs. You cannot call it as lone electrons. These two makes one pair. These two makes one pair, and these two makes one pair. Okay. So this is how you will get the dot structure for PCl five. And you see the octet of this phosphorus, which is there as a central atom. how many electrons are there around this phosphorus one bond means two electrons i told you right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so this phosphorus has 12 electrons around it 
but having eight electrons is stable but this is exceeding eight so what you have observed here exceeding exceeding eight isn't it so this this is one of the limitation uh, and this theory could not explain why some elements exceed octet but this is stable this molecule is stable but where phosphorus uh, if it has four bonds around it or if it has eight electrons around it, it is considered as stable. But here it is exceeding that eight electron concept, right? So for that, uh, the theory could not explain uh, anything. So this is considered as one of the limitation. Extended octate we say, okay? Like that, we have another limitation called limited octate. Limited octate. Okay, for example, uh, here many more examples you can write here guys. IF7 is another example, SF6 is another example. In all of them, the central atom has extended octet. You mean, uh, I mean to say, uh, you know, they have more than 8 electrons around them. Okay, fine. Limited octet. Example, you can observe beryllium chloride. So, when we write the dot structure for beryllium chloride, it is like this, beryllium and two bonds, Cl, Cl, okay. So, Cl, uh, on each Cl, three lone pairs, on each Cl, three lone pairs, okay. Cl's octet is satisfied. What about the beryllium? See, any atom to be stable, eight electrons it should have, but around this only two bonds are there. That means it has only four electrons. Right. So, uh, it, it is not showing that 8 electron thing around it. So, this is what we call limited octet. So, other examples for limited octet is BF6. This is another, uh, sorry, BF3. So, the best example for limited octet. Okay. And the third limitation is octet rule cannot be explained in odd electron species. Octet rule cannot be explained in this kind of substances. Octet rule cannot be ex uh, explained in this type of molecule which we call it as limited octet. Similarly, octet rule cannot be explained for odd electron species. So, what do you mean by odd electron species? Observe. When I try to write the dot structure for NO molecule, okay, this is called as nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, remember the name, NO molecule. See, I can write something like this, N double bond O, here two lone pair of electrons, here one lone pair, but there is only one single electron. One more electron, you don't find it as a pair, right? So, such a species, you can observe, no, there is only one single electron and there is no octet satisfied for nitrogen. For oxygen, it's okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Octet satisfied. For nitrogen, you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Eighth electron is not there. Okay. So, such molecules are called odd electron species. Okay. So, usually uh, when molecules have single electron, you know, they show a special character called paramagnetic character. And they will also show some color. So, here this compound is yellow in color, okay. So, because of the single electron, it has paramagnetic nature and it will show color also. Paramagnetic means ability to get attracted towards magnet, okay. So, similar to that, another example you have for odd electron species that is NO2, okay. NO2 gas, it's a brown colored gas and this is, there is an odd electron on nitrogen, okay. So, uh, even in this type of compounds, you cannot satisfactorily explain octet rule, okay. And another, uh, you know, drawback is it cannot explain about cannot explain shapes of molecule, shapes of molecules, okay. So, all these molecules, whatever we have studied, you know, they have certain shapes. Actually, these chlorine atoms around phosphorus is arranged in a particular shape, in a particular direction. 
So these shapes and all was not explained by this octet theory. Okay. So these uh, see limitation number one, limitation number two, limitation number three. You should never ever forget these limitations. They are important for competitive examinations also. Okay, so that's all about uh, Quashel and Lewis theory, octet rule and writing Lewis dot structures for various molecules. So I covered the first uh, very important concept of the chapter. In my next video, you will learn about formal charge and its calculation. Okay, and also I'll start about ionic compound or ionic bond, all details of ionic bond. So with this, I will end the session. Keep learning, keep revising and do subscribe our channel to learn the concepts in a better way, easiest way. Thank you so much.